What's happening guys? In this video we're going to be continuing our series of videos covering user interface development in Python, specifically using PyQt. Um, if you haven't seen the prior videos, we'll be using Python 2.7 and PyQt 4, uh, but the majority of the stuff we've covered uh, could easily be transferred over to PyQt 5 as I have experience in both. Um, I just feel like PyQt 4 and Python 2.7 are easier to understand than having to transfer over to using Python 3. Um, in the last four videos we built upon a single Python script to create um, this user interface right here uh, with features such as a toolbar along the top, um, a tab widget to contain different uh, widget features that we have on each page. So this one just has a push button with a signal and slot uh, action to connect it to the queue label below. Um, and also we had this uh, slightly more advanced tab which allows you to open up a uh, file so we can just choose something from one of our earlier videos like video 2 to open up the uh, source code for that and then it will paste it into um, the widget we put below which is the uh, Q text edit widget. <coughs> um, so today uh, in this video we're going to be doing something slightly different. We're going to be departing from our prior script uh, so I can showcase a simple technique for creating extra windows in your applications. Um, though theoretically the same technique could just as easily be applied to our earlier application. I think it's easier for people to understand if we just start from scratch and just have a very simple uh, user interface and then add the functionality to that. Um, instead of having to go through and add it to our script that had like already almost 200 lines of code. <clears throat> so just to start off, I'll obviously import pretty much the same stuff we've been doing earlier. I uh, import sys, and then this is how I normally import from PyQt because it pretty much covers everything you're going to need unless you're doing multi-threaded applications, but we haven't gotten there yet. And then, obviously, same as we've been doing earlier, we're going to create the uh, entryway into the main function. Initialize an instance of queue application, passing in the uh, command line arguments. And then here we're creating an instance of the soon-to-be um, class that will contain the actual window code. And then here we're actually executing the uh, queue application, which will cause the uh, main window to be run inside of it. So something different from what we've been doing earlier is that in this case we added in parent as one of the arguments that's passed into the main window. Um, and as you can tell, we did not pass a parent here. Um, and I'll explain that a little bit later, but um, it pretty much is directly uh, influenced by the fact that we want to create more than one actual window. Um, and we want to be able to have some sort of uh, communication system between the windows. Uh, say, for example, if you're closing out of one of the windows, um, obviously this will be different depending on your application, but um, in most cases you're going to want to have, um, if one window is closed, all the windows will close. Um, that is not going to be true if you're, if you say you have a main window and then you're opening up a settings window. Um, but the way in which you would go about doing that is going to be slightly different than what we're doing here, because in this case we're going to be basically duplicating the this main window class um, whereas if you had a settings window you would have like a main window and you would have another class for a settings window 
and then the main window would simply be creating an instance of the settings window when it's normally probably initialized. And then if the user wants to access the settings menu, you would just call um, from the main window, you would call a function within the settings window, which would open it up, initialize all the settings by loading them from a file. Um, and then if you close out of the settings window, you want to just basically erase everything the user's done. Um, or you could have it so it opens up a dialog to ask whether or not uh, you want to save the settings even though you're closing out of the settings window, something along those lines. Um, but in this case, we're going to be having multiple instances of the main window. Um, so just duplicates, like a main window here, a main window here. So if you close out of one of those, there isn't really any hierarchy in terms of well, maybe this one should be left open, this one should be closed. So in our case, I'm just going to show you guys how to make it so that all the windows will be closed if one of the windows will be closed. And it, it's very easy to just to uh, transition out of that as well if you want to have slightly different functionality. So if you recall from our prior videos, we're going to be doing the same idea here, initializing the actual underlying code. And then we just want to also save the parent that we've passed in. So we'll just create a class variable here to save that. And if it's not, it doesn't really matter. We'll be able to check that later. Um, we're also going to add in a child variable in case this, uh, ma this exact main window is creating multiple windows, um, multiple duplicates from inside of itself. We want to be able to uh, actually contain those windows um, rather than losing them, because if we're closing out of this window, we want to be able to tell the parent to close and also tell the child to close, and then that'll have a cascading effect, closing all the windows. So obviously here, we're just going to set this equal to none for now. We'll use the same terminology to begin the uh, UI creation function. Just do something simple like create a 500 by 500 pixel window. Um, we want to create a button that we can use to create a duplicate of the window. So we'll just say new window button is equal to Q push button. connect this to a function that we'll create in a second to actually create the window. And obviously we're going to show the window here. Okay, so now we'll create a uh, the copy window function, which will create a obviously a copy of the window we're in. Um, and so here, what we're going to want to do is create a new instance of main window, right? But we want to be able to pass um, ourselves, so just this instance of main window, um, to the child window so that it can save us as the parent. In the case that it closes, it wants to be able to tell us to close as well. So we'll pass in the pointer to ourselves there. Um, and then we also, we're going to want to set that to child because this is going to be one of the children of our current window. Okay. So right now, um, if we run this, test it out, we're not going to really have the cascading closure effect, which is what we are shooting for in this video. So let's just launch this. Okay. So obviously here we have the window, and then we have our open copy button right here in the top left. And if we click this, this will create a copy of the window we currently have. And you can do that however many times you want. Um, so now in this case we have three windows. All of them are exactly the same. But if we close out of one of the children, we're not necessarily going to have the rest of the windows close which is the action that we want. And we also want it to work the other direction where if you close the overall parent, the children are also close. And I believe it will do that right now because um, because of the way PyQT is set up. You're, you're going to have a child that has no head. 
Um, I don't think that's allowed, but we can actually test that out. So if we had it like this, and then we close out of the parent. Okay, so it's even worse than I thought. It'll actually leave the child open. And pretty much in every application, you're never really going to want to have that be a, a feature because, like, say you opened up the settings menu in here in, Pi, or in Sublime Text, um, and then you close out of Sublime Text using this exit button up here, but for some reason, the settings window is still open. Um, that just doesn't seem like it would ever really be something that someone would want to build into their application. So what we're going to want to do now, ooh, what we're going to want to do now is create a, um, basically an interrupt handler. So in this function, we're going to be catching um, the event that the user tries to close the window um, via the red X button in the top right. Um, so normally what you would do here, E is just the actual event. And in this case, you could do like event.accept or event.ignore. Um, in this case, we're just going to control it manually ourselves. Um, so what you would do is self.close, and this would just close the window. Um, but remember, uh, recall we want to be able to close the parent and the child uh, before we close ourselves, obviously. If we closed ourselves, then did that, it wouldn't actually work because... Uh, I believe once you stop, once you close the window in PyQt, it basically stops running the code for that class. <clears throat> you could hide the window and then continue running code, but that isn't exactly what we want to do. So let's create. Uh, actually, so what we would want to do is do self.parent.close, right? Um, but what about the case where there is no parent? So say for example, if this was the first uh, window that was created. Um, this will give you an error, which doesn't really matter, but uh, if we want to avoid that, we can do if self.parent is not none, then we'll close the parent. <coughs> um, the second thing we have to do, of course, is check and see if there's a child. If there's a child, we're also going to want to close the child. So if self.child is not none, self.child.close. And what these two lines of code will do, um, so for example, this line of code is going to call the child's close event function. So it works with a cascading effect. So the child then is going to check, try to, clo <coughs> try to close its children, try to close its parent. In this case, we're already going to be closed because we're calling this line of code directly after. So it's not actually going to end up calling this function again, but it um, doesn't really matter uh, because it'll just be calling a function of an object that's already destroyed, so we're not even really going to get an error. Um, so if we try to run this now, we should have that exact cascading effect. Just save that. Run this. Okay, so let's open up some copies. And if you recall, when we close the third child last time, it did not close the rest of the windows, but if we do it now, you'll see all of them are closed. Um, so that's pretty much it for this video. We can test it out again using the middle window, and then also the parent window just to make sure everything works out. Okay, that was good. <clears throat> Another thing I could show in a future video is how to... Uh, make it so when you open up a child window, it opens up directly next to the parent window. Um, that's something I've implemented in the past, just to make it easier when you have like a settings menu, like I was explaining earlier. You want to have that open up next to the parent window, rather than opening up on like a monitor on the other side of the room. Um, so now if we close the parent, it'll close all the children. And that's pretty much it. If you guys enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. PyQT tutorials in the future, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.